who knows uh, what is the mythical man month? Have you ever heard of the mythical man month? It is the title of a book. Okay, uh, the mythical man month is uh, probably the first uh, uh, important book about uh, software engineering management. The title uh, uh, referred to the idea that you can measure uh, easily uh, the effort of people in terms of man month and that uh, uh, you can uh, essentially switch people add people or remove people from a project to uh, meet your final uh, goal. The author of the book, uh, Fred Brooks, uh, was a manager at IBM. And uh, essentially, one of the uh, main uh, takeaways from this book is uh, uh, if you add additional people to a, a late project uh, yeah, for the purpose of trying to meet your deadline, you actually are making your project even later because adding people that never worked on a project uh, makes a lot of uh, uh, confusion. And in the end, uh, you make things worse instead of improving because uh, uh, software development is not like uh, building uh, uh, physical stuff. If you are building a car and you double the, the, the people, uh, you can have two parallel lines uh, of assembly and you end up having two cars built at the same time. Unfortunately, software is not that. Uh, two lines of code cannot be written in parallel. Uh, or it is quite difficult to achieve this goal. Um, some interesting uh, uh, lectures about uh, uh, software engineering can be uh, taken from, uh, as I mentioned you before, what is happening right now in the news. So I'm not going to talk about the medical month, but I'm going to talk about uh, uh, what I can talk, uh, what I can uh, call uh, the mythical Elon month, okay? Uh, let's take a, a person that is called Elon. Uh, you can imagine anyone you like, uh, and we would like to see uh, and to use uh, recent news for some uh, uh, what they call teachable moments uh, uh, that allow me to talk about uh, some uh, uh, basic software engineering principles. So um, one of the first uh, teachable moments uh, uh, is this one when uh, um, our uh, character, Elon, starts firing people, uh, presumably based on the number of lines they committed during their development. Um, okay, the comments already uh, say uh, something about uh, uh, the idea of uh, uh, doing this kind of uh, uh, operation. Actually, if we analyze better, um, we often have the problem of uh, uh, trying to measure some conceptual constructs. A construct is a, a typically an abstract idea. Productivity is a construct. The problem with this uh, abstract construct is that it is quite difficult to measure them in a single way. Okay. Um, so when you have a construct, you typically end up trying to measure what is called a proxy. It is something that you can easily measure and that uh, you believe it is somehow related or correlated to uh, your idea of construct, okay? So I decide that uh, your final grade is uh, uh, proportional to the number of lines that you commit in your project, okay? I'm joking, of course, that's not our case. Uh, Clearly, measuring productivity in terms of committed line of code uh, is uh, a bad idea for different uh, reasons. First of all, uh, basically, there is no single line of code measure. 
also, if you write your code, uh, your product in different languages, one line of C code is uh, how many lines of Java, of uh, Kotlin, or uh, Swift, or Flutter, or whatever you want. Uh, there is no equivalence. Okay. What about uh, the comment lines? What about uh, uh, if you write a single, very long, 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 long uh, statement? Okay, so uh, also not all valuable contribution correspond to line of code. Okay, maybe in your tips uh, someone is doing more test than coding. Test is essential to guarantee a certain level of quality of your product. The person that is doing more testing than uh, coding will be essentially unproductive. And if you work in a larger corporation and uh, you do some more high level work, trying to maintain a given ethical standard for your company, you probably never wrote a line of code. Uh, also, sometimes uh, the right operation to do is removing code, not adding more code. So in this case, probably productivity would go negative. Okay, So you are fired and you owe me some money in addition. Okay, uh, And also, having a single measure of productivity, uh, such bad defined, uh, typically uh, clash with what is called the good odds law. When your measure become a target, it ceases to be a good measure. Okay. If uh, I grade you based on the number of line of code, you write one uh, keyword per line. That's it. You get uh, top grades. Uh, if I grade you uh, based on the length of your lines, uh, no problem. You write a single program on a single line. That's it. Top grades again. So using bad measures, uh, uh, especially when you use only one measure, uh, typically makes uh, uh, the measure useless. More about measurement in some future lecture when we talk more about what is measurement, especially in software engineering. Uh, other teachable moments. Uh, okay, so uh, our fictional character, uh, Elon, fired uh, 3,000 people, and then uh, the day after, or a few days later, uh, tried to call them back. trying to offer a better position. Uh, why? Because essentially, uh, if you fire a lot of people, you are essentially uh, throwing away a lot of knowledge. In general, we can talk about architectural knowledge. Why your system is as it is. Typically, architectural knowledge is not uh, well documented, uh, if not documented at all. And uh, typically, if you have a, your architecture documented, uh, it is not up to date. So if you find a person that knows a lot of details about your system, you're simply uh, forgetting, in terms of uh, institution, uh, whatever that people, uh, the, the specific people uh, knew about your system. Typically, there was a, a, a political uh, uh, claim that uh, one is one. Uh, actually, one is not equal to one because uh, every single person has a different knowledge. Okay, so people are not repressible. And if someone that has a lot of knowledge leave your company, you are in trouble.
another teachable moment. Uh, here the hashtag is uh, uh, sleep where you work. Okay, so bonus point for whoever sleeps uh, where you study. So if I find you sleeping here on the floor, you get plus one point. Uh, of course, uh, uh, this happens uh, if you work in a toxic environment. Okay, if you ever see these kind of things or someone asks you to do these kind of things, uh, leave immediately. Running out of the door, out of the window, jumping from the third floor, uh, leave that place. Okay, because these kind of companies do not respect people as they are. Okay, and typically, this is not the only uh, indicator. There are a lot of other abusive behaviors in, in these kind of companies. So you will end up having a lot of burnout people uh, and eventually bad software. Also, this kind of toxic environment typically reduce diversity. gender, race, typically this kind of environment focus on a single white male developer. Everything else is typically uh, pushed away from the company. So in the end, you have little diversity. That means you will have a very bad product. Of course, uh, this is a, a bad consequence. Uh, a toxic environment is wrong by itself, even if uh, it led you to have a great product, okay? Our fictional or not so fictional character also uh, told uh, some people, uh, I need to take uh, a moment to completely rewrite the software stack. Okay, you realized uh, since you estimated your first uh, task and stories that uh, it is very easy to underestimate the complexity of any task, okay? So uh, this is a clear error. And the problem is that uh, if you underestimate the work that you are going to do, uh, it is a problem but you can fix it, you learn. If you underestimate the work that other people are going to do, it's much worse for them because they learn, you don't. Okay, so double error. And again, uh, you fall back into what is a toxic environment. <laughs>